Hello my young friends. I am Javashri Ghosh, teacher in Demonstration Multipurpose School. My dear children, I welcome you to my science class. Children, it's quite unfortunate that you people are not able to go to your schools, meet your friends, meet your teachers. Even we teachers miss our students. But don't worry children, we have a way out. We are trying our best to reach you. Children, today get ready to learn and enjoy the first chapter of your book, Class 9th, Matter in Our Surroundings. So children, get ready with your notebooks and pen. Let's start. Okay. <clears throat> what is matter? As you know, children, a universe, earth, comprises of lots of things. There are lots of things surrounding you. There are human beings, there are animals, trees, air, water, your TV set, your chair, table, you are surrounded by lots of things. It's not it. And you know these objects, these things, as a scientist, they call it matter. Okay? This matter, they have some mass. You know mass? Yes. Even they occupy some space here. That is, they have certain volume. Is not it? So children, matter has mass and matter has volume. That is, it occupies space. Now when scientists, they have known about matter, now the next part comes, what is the matter made up of or what is the composition of matter? You know, one group of individuals or you can say intellectuals, they said matter is a continuous thing like a block of wood. But another set of individuals, they argued, no. Matter is not continuous. Matter is made up of particles, just like sand particles. But children, science doesn't go for argument. Science needs proof. Science needs experiments and their conclusions. So, let's do certain activities, children, to know the composition of matter. Okay, children? I have this glass of water with me. Now, let me add some salt to this. See, I have taken some salt and I'm adding to this. Now, I'm stirring this. You see, children, the salt is getting dissolved. I have also put a mark before adding the salt. Now you see, when I am continuously stirring this, after a few minutes, see, can you find the salt? Is the salt visible here? Where did it vanish? No, it didn't vanish. It is certainly here. It's not it. Let me taste it. It's so salty. Means salt is inside this water. Where did the salt go? Children, just think. I have added certain amount of salt to water. Where did it vanish? Did it really vanish or it's there inside water? When we dissolve salt, in the particles of the salt get into the spaces between the particles of water. 
particles of water are there, particles of salt get mixed into it. So, we have done one activity. What do you conclude? The conclusion is, matter is made up of particles. We have given proof to this. We have shown the particles of salt are mixed or intermixes with the particles of water. So, matter is made up of particles. Now, let us show how big, how small, how tiny, how large are these particles. Okay? Suppose children, I take here 80 ml of water. Okay? Here in this container, I have potassium permanganate. When potassium permanganate dissolves in water, it gives a beautiful color. Let's see. See children, what is the color? Uh, we got a lovely color of potassium permanganate. It is dissolved here. So, when I stir it, can you see the beautiful color, dark violet color I have got? Now, next what am I going to do? Here in these four beakers, I have 70 ml of water in each. What I want to do is, I want to dilute, go on diluting this potassium permanganate. I have a measuring cylinder that is 10 ml. Okay, this measure is 10 ml. What I do, from this, I'll pour 10 ml of solution over here. Okay, children, see you. Then, I dilute this by putting in 70 ml of water. What do you see, children? Yes, we have a dark pink color. Lighter than this, but still we can know this is the solution of potassium permanganate, is not it? Now, again, I'm going to dilute it. See here, here also light pink color, we have a bitter, lighter shade of pink. This shows that what do you conclude? Yes, still this potassium permanganate in this. Is not it? Okay. Let's go for the next step. See here children. In the next step, I put you. Here. here also traces of pink is there. Pink traces are there. It also shows that still, after dilating several times, we are getting traces of potassium permanganate in this solution. Now children, can you just imagine I had used a bit of potassium permanganate and here also in the last stage also we are seeing traces of this. So what happens here? On dissolving potassium permanganate in water and on dilating it several times, we still find a colored solution. This shows that there must be millions of tiny particles in just one crystal of potassium permanganate, which keeps on dividing themselves into smaller and smaller particles. Yes, this was an activity. And children, so what is the conclusion? Our conclusion is that particles are very small in size. They are tiny particles. Matter is composed of tiny particles. So children, we have matter is made up of particles and that too the particles are very, very, very small in size. Okay? Next, we are going to learn what are the characteristics of particles of matter. Characteristics means properties. Here, will describe or will learn about the physical properties of matter. 
children you have seen that in my previous activities when i had mixed salt in water when i have put some potassium permanganate in water what did happen this potassium permanganate salt they got evenly distributed in water is not it you see can you see the traces of salt here can you see the traces of potassium permanganate no this shows that there is a lots of space between the particles of water which accommodates particles of salt or potassium permanganate we have water there are water is made up of particles and salt is also made up of particles similarly water is here also potassium permanganate is made up of particles now what happens particles of potassium permanganate or salt mixes with the particles of water and the traces are not found so what do we conclude from this activity we conclude that the particles of matter have space between them since they have space they can accommodate other particles also okay children now children i want to show you a beautiful activity okay let me take some water okay putting a drop of colored ink in glass of water we see that the color spreads throughout this we can carry out here also let me have ink okay let me put the ink over here just see how it spreads just look at the glass how lovely color how it's spreading the ink is spreading here okay and one thing you can see they're continuously in motion this water and ink both are trying to intermix with each other water is the particles of water is in motion as well as the particles of ink is in motion this intermixing of these particles of ink and water is termed as diffusion what is it it is diffusion intermixing of particles see here how lovely they are mixing intermixing of particles of ink and water is termed as diffusion okay even we have seen diffusion in the here also see it is also diffusion here i have used ink and here i have used potassium permanganate in both the cases diffusion occurs what is diffusion intermixing of particles of matter on their own i'm not stirring it it is mixing by itself is not it children so from this we can conclude particles of matter are continuously moving here particles of water is moving particles of ink is moving here particles of water is moving particles of potassium permanganate is moving okay children as you know when in a matter the particles inside the matter are moving continuously okay due to this movement they gain certain amount of energy that energy which is possessed by the particle due to the motion is termed as kinetic energy what do we call it kinetic energy this uh, suppose i want to give you an example let me give you an example many of you children 
might be participating in sports is not it running jumping high jump long jump is not it yes children they do those who go for the long jump competitions what they do when they start do they jump from the marking line on the sand have you ever observed no they don't do that what they do they start running from a certain distance you can say 20 to 30 meters or more than that even why do they run from certain distance and then jump from the mark so that they can jump to a longer distance why while running children they gain some energy when they are in motion they gain some energy and this energy is termed as kinetic energy and due to this energy they can jump a longer distance similarly in case of this matter also particles while moving they gain some energy and that energy possessed by the particles is termed as kinetic energy one thing let me tell you when the body gains kinetic when the particles gains kinetic energy what happens inside the matter when energy is there they will move apart from each other is not it so the particles also gain speed and they try to move apart from each other creating a space between the particles okay and what happens when the temperature rises means it's hot what happens when the temperature rises the kinetic energy of the particles increase kinetic energy of the particles increase means they gain speed they move apart from each other okay and they create space for other things with the increasing temperature the kinetic energy of the particles also increases i'll just give you one example from your day to day life now it's summer is not it children and you want just cold drinks for yourself if cold drinks is not available you can make the lemonade also what you do have you ever tried by taking ice cold water and dissolving sugar in that and the in on the other part you have tried dissolving sugar in a cup of coffee or tea so children try at home by mixing sugar in ice cold water and sugar in your hot coffee okay now just see in which sugar dissolves faster so with the rise in temperature the movement of the particles increases energy possessed by the particles due to its motion is called kinetic energy energy of particles increases with the increase in temperature children i have got one thing for you let us start doing one experiment in which you can conclude what is the property see here children i have a piece of chalk i am able to break it without any problem so easily so to say here i have a iron rail this is a nail okay now if i try to bend it also it's not possible for me at least i am not able to bend it but this is a wire okay children if i put a little bit of force on this what happens i am able to bend this okay children i am able to bend this there are different examples i am showing you you can conclude what is the difference in all these things see your children you know what is it yes it's a rubber band rubber band see you and what i do with this rubber band i can stretch it and i leave it okay i can play with it 
children there are certain things i'm able to break it easily there are some other things which i try but i could not why what is the difference children the difference is that the particles of chalk the particles in the chalk are bit loosely packed when i apply a little bit of force it breaks okay but in the particles suppose i take the spoon i apply the force it doesn't break the particles in the spoon or the iron nail what happens the force of attraction is greater so particles in matter are held together by the force of attraction okay they are held together by a certain force and that is the force of attraction particles of matter attract each other now just give a thought a diver when jumps into the pond river wherever or the swimming pool what happens how does it swim it just moves like uh, separates the water and then goes forward is not it which property of matter does this observation show it's for you to think which is easier to break nail or chalk that i have shown you and you just tell me why now children matters can be classified okay we can classify or categorize matter what is the basis of classification of matter on what basis we can classify the matter see here matter into solid liquid and gas on what basis they are classified based upon the particle arrangement you can see the differences in this figure the classification is also based on the energy of the particles i've talked about the energy of the particles then based upon the distance between the particles that you are able to see on the screen also so states of matter are solids liquid and gas solid has fixed shape it has a definite volume also liquid has no fixed shape has definite volume gas has no fixed shape <clears throat> neither it has a definite volume children apart from solid liquid and gases we have two more states of matter that is the plasma state and the bose einstein condensate uh that part will discuss discuss in the later half of half of this chapter okay uh we won't go deep into those things but you should know that we have two more states of matter now let's discuss this one by one see here solid state what is this solids are rigid why rigid i'm trying to break this i if i try to break break this table then what happen i'm not able to break it i need a karate man to break this if i also try to break this toy i'm not able to do this because it's rigid okay solids are incompressible i'm not able to press this solid am i am i press this so able to press this solid this is also solid you can say this is also a solid okay am i able to press this no i'm not able to do this it is incompressible solids have definite shape and volume this is a solid which has a beautiful cubical shape and even volume we can find the volume of a cube we have seen that solids can be broken or deformed by application of force this is a solid wire 
it can be deformed see you I am applying force I am deforming is oh this is also a solid unable to break it okay but one thing I want to show you children this is sugar okay this is what is sugar sugar is solid or what of course it's solid is not it now we know that solid can be poured but they are solids we know liquids can be poured but what about solid let me do this I am pouring this solid into this katori what happens the solid has taken the shape of the katori does all the things all solid do that no but when I have poured sugar in this katori it takes the shape of the katori if I put the solid somewhere in this glass it will take the shape of the glass so this sugar is solid or not children it's solid because every grain of sugar that has not changed the this grain of sugar that has not changed its state it is rigid it is incompressible the bulk okay it takes the shape it can be poured but one grain it has not changed its shape okay children one thing we had discussed solids are incompressible I'll show you one thing what is this children this is sponge what is the state yes it's solid when I compress it and then release the force it comes back to the original shape so sponge are solid solids either do not diffuse or diffuse very slowly solid solid diffusion is rare solids have more density what is this density density is mass per unit volume I have certain questions for you and children remember note it down and take it at task do it rubber band changes its shape is it a solid sponge can be compressed is it a solid arrange the following in the increasing order of the force of attraction between the particles air sugar oil juice when salt which is denser 1 kg of cotton or 1 kg of sand children give a wild thought and write down try to find the answers next children let's go to the liquid state liquids are not rigid and can flow if I drop some water on the table what see here I'm dropping it is flowing it doesn't have a definite shape it takes the shape of the container in which it is put liquids are almost incompressible liquids do not have definite shape have a fixed volume solid liquid and gases can diffuse in liquid I have shown you we have diffused potassium permanganate in liquid we have diffused ink in all liquid they can diffuse easily even rate of diffusion is more in liquid as compared to solid because in liquids the arrangement of particles is not that closely arranged as in solid that bit loosely arranged particles in liquid have more space between themselves as compared to solid now comes the gaseous state gases have tendency to flow hence gases are also called fluid we say gases can also take the shape of the thing in which it is put for example let me show you I have a balloon this is a sort of round balloon okay when I have filled the gas and it is filled it seems the gas is round in shape here gases is filled here it takes the shape of the balloon 
whereas when the same amount of gas is filled here is take the shape of a heart shape so gases they do not have fixed shape they take the shape of the container or the thing in which they are filled okay gases are highly compressible we can compress the gas as in case of bottled like gases lpg cng oxygen they are bottled why they are bottled in those cylinders we can fill large volume of gas and they can be transported easily particles of gas have larger space between them we cannot say the cylinder is half filled why think gases diffuse very fast due to the high kinetic energy of its particles children suppose you are in your study and a tempting smell comes from your kitchen you run towards your kitchen is not at to see what delicious food is there when the hot delicious food is being cooked you get the aroma very quickly is not it how do you get this this is just diffusion of the aroma with the air and that reaches you very fast but do you ever get the smell of cold food that fast no when there is rise in temperature diffusion is also more so you get the odor or the smell of the cooked food that is a hot food faster even incense sticks you have seen when those are burnt or lighted the gas the smell you get it very quickly is not it that is diffusion and gases diffuse in water very quickly you know children due to this diffusion of gases in water what happens lots of aquatic creatures they are alive for this the aquatic creatures we stay in water they respire with the oxygen mixed in water so due to this diffusion they are able to sustain life density of gas is minimum as compared to solids and liquids children i have got few questions for you you have to think because i have discussed those things ice being solid floats in water why let me give you a bit of hint for this then you can write your answer ice is a solid and we know that solids have more density than liquid is not it but in case of ice what happens ice is the volume of ice is 9% greater than volume of water of the same mass okay so the density of ice is greater than density of what water so ice floats on water like sorry uh, is less and so ice floats on water even children we have lots of uh, type of wood also the wood seems it's more denser but no wood also floats on water you try it at home gas exerts pressure on the walls of the container why as i have told you when the kinetic energy of the particles increase they move here and there in the random motion when they move here and there they strike each other and even they strike with the walls of the container okay so due to their motion they strike the walls of the container and the pressure on the walls also increases why does honey diffuse in water at a slower rate than ink if i put a drop of honey in water it diffuses see the diffusion is slow as compared to the ink it doesn't diffuse so fast we have to stir it okay 
which property of gases help us to detect the leakage of LPG gas? How do you know that LPG gas is leaking? Yes, when it's leaking, what happens? You can smell it because it diffuses with the air. A balloon kept in sun burst after some time. Why? Suppose I keep this balloon in sun. After some time it will burst. Why? Let me give you a hint. The particles inside the balloon, due to the increase in the temperature, they gain the kinetic energy. <coughs> the speed also increases. Okay. When the speed increases, they exert pressure on the walls of the balloon. And balloon tries to expand and ultimately what happens? Children, till now what we have studied, let us summarize it. Differences between solid, liquid and gas on basis of certain characteristics. Shape, volume, force of attraction, interparticle space, rigidity or fluidity, compressibility. I think this chart will help you to remember things in a better way. Children, this is all for today and wait for the next class. I think you have enjoyed this class. You, uh, you have seen all these things and I think you have learnt a bit. Now what to do next is Take out your book, read it thoroughly and try to answers, answer the questions that I have given. Okay children, take your own time, stay home, stay safe.